Welcome to Gamer Ability. I'm your host Sixpenny and in today's video I'm going to teach virtual golfers how to master the wind in PGA 2K21 with a systematic approach and actual numbers and calculations. This is part one of my wind tutorial series which is focused on the wind's distance effect. Part two will be focused on how to aim in regards to the wind and then part three will combine all the elements of elevation, lie percentages, and wind in an actual round so that you will be able to dial in your game on the course. Stay tuned and enjoy. So I'm going to start off this video reviewing the golf bag that I used to compile all my wind data stats. So I use the TGC Deluxe Goat Edition driver. Now if you don't have the Deluxe Edition that's okay. You can still use this Ben Hogan GS53. It has the same exact stats. I use the Bridgestone Golf Tor B JGR Woods. I usually just use a 5 wood. I use the Wilson D7 3 Hybrid, the TaylorMade Silmax 4 Hybrid, the Bridgestone Golf Tor B JGR HF2 Irons. I use the TGC CV Master Wedges. So, this is my favorite clubs in the game. I didn't want to calculate the win for every club in the game because I really didn't. I like the clubs that I use, so I really didn't see the need. So, if you want to have the most accurate win stats based on my data, you can use these clubs, but I wouldn't think it would be a big difference using another club. So, let's start talking about wind. So, in the game, there's four different wind speed categories. Low wind between 1 and 6 miles per hour, medium wind between 7 and 11, high wind between 12 and 17, and very high wind 18 and above. Now, what I've found is that each wind category, when compiled together, affects the ball a little bit differently. But what I did was I created a practice facility and I hit thousands and thousands of shots and calculated what percent the wind affected each shot's distance. And then I put the data in per, for each wind category. And then I took the averages of all of those to compile a average multiplier that you can use to determine how many yards each wind type, so whether it's a tailwind, cross tailwind, headwind, or cross headwind, you will know within one to four yards how much the wind is going to affect. So let's move into the data. So I will say that if you do use this system, if you do use my numbers, I spent a lot of time compiling this data. I spent countless hours going over calculations, going over video, and making sure my calculations were right. So if you, if you do use the, these numbers, if you do use these data sheets, make sure you show your support by liking this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you take screenshots of these, anything like that, or share it somewhere, make sure you keep the Gamer Ability logo in there and make sure you tell people where it came from. Now, this is my first data set here for Tailwind. You have the clubs on one, club categories on one side and the average percent multipliers. I'll go over what the average percent multipliers with real video examples here in the video, but these numbers are very important. So for each, I separated it by drivers, woods, hybrids, irons. I include the wedges in a category, but I recommend you actually using each specific wedge average in there. Now keep in mind, this data is an average of all the different wind speeds. 
I have data for each category that's more specific. And I'm going to be putting the, all, the, all of that data on my website in the future. So I have a website that sh hopefully will be up by September. And I'll put each wind category and each speed and each club. That way you'll see the specific data. But I will tell you, this data is enough for you to start having more accurate data on the wind. Now, keep in mind they're averages. So they're not going to be perfect. As right, Some of them you'll see right on. Some of them will be within one to three yards. So that's tailwind. Let's move into the next category, a cross tailwind. Whether it's crossing to the left, crossing to the right, these are the values for the cross tailwind. Then we move into the headwind. These are the average values for the headwind. Now, again, I, it's it's very important to separate the wedges out. So I, because if you look, the wedges average is 1.33, the lob wedge is 1.06. So if you use 1.33, you may be close with the pitching gap and sand wedge, but not as close with the lob wedge. Now the other clubs, the irons were all so close that they can fit in their own category. Same thing for hybrids, woods as well. Then we move into the final category which is cross headwind. This is the category with the most variability. I've seen so many variations because what if it's not a true crosswind? What if it's slightly crosswind but mostly kind of a straight left wind? It's going to be a lower percent multiplier. And then if it's closer to a full headwind, it's going to play more like a full headwind. But these numbers will help you get closer. And the more you watch me actually play my rounds, you'll start to learn what numbers I use. And you can always just stop by a stream on Twitch and just ask me a question about a shot. Ask me what wind multiplier I would use for that. And I'm going to help out that way. So there's the data. But how do we use it? So before we get into the video examples, I want to review the calculations with you. So an example of these calculations will be in the description below. But what are you going to do? You're going to take the average percent multiplier from the charts, multiply that by the wind speed in miles per hour. This will give you the wind distance, distance effect in yards. If it's a tailwind or cross tailwind, you need to add that to the carry distance. So that would be carry distance in yards plus the wind distance effect gives you the total carry distance. If it's a headwind or cross headwind, subtract from the carry distance. So you'll take the carry distance minus the wind distance effect and that will give you the total carry distance. Now if you are not familiar with what different wind categories look like in game. Here's a quick reference page for you that you can use to categorize each wind. So let's move into a real example. We're looking at a four hybrid with a 10 mile an hour tailwind. So first thing we need to do is look up the average percent multiplier for hybrids. So I have it on the top left of the screen here. It's 0.66. So we need to take 0.66 multiplied by 10 miles per hour. That gives us 6.6 .6 yards. Now since this is a tailwind, I need to add that value to the club's carry distance. So let's go ahead and hit plus. 187 and it gives us around 193 between 193 and 194 let's watch this let's see what it carries right at 193 So that was perfect. So let's go ahead and move on 
to the next example. We're looking at a cross tailwind here. Now with the cross tailwind, the number is going to be different. So you're going to pull up the cr look at your cross tailwind, my average percent multipliers. We're looking at a 7 iron, 151 yard carry. What is the multiplier for irons? It's 0.55. So let's put 0.55 in our calculator, and we need to multiply that by 4 miles per hour. That gives us 2.2. So since it's a tailwind variety, it's a cross tailwind, we need to add that to the club's carry distance. So 2.2, I mean, it's easy, it's 153, 153.2. So let's, it can land anywhere between 153 and 154. So let's take a look and see. One fifty three. So we were right on. Let's move into the next one. We're looking at a headwind now. So with the headwind, we're, the club we have here is a sand wedge, which carries 95 yards. So remember, what's the first step? Figure out how much distance the wind is going to take off. So we look for the sand wedge. You can either use the wedge specific. I, I think it's best to actually look at the sand wedge one. So we need to take 1.34. 1 1.34 multiplied by 23. That's going to give us 30.8. So we need to take, since this is a headwind, we need to take 95 minus 30.8. So let's go ahead, let's take 95 minus 30.8, and that gives us 64. So in theory, now remember these are averages. In theory, it should land between 164, 165. I'm going to say 163, 165. Now let's take a look. 160. I mean, six. I said 160. 64. So we were right on. I meant 60. So we landed right at 64. Let's go ahead and move on to the last example looking at a cross headwind. Now, remember I said earlier, there's a lot of variability in cross headwind. The reason for this, if we look at the top here, this is a straight diagonal cross headwind. But if it was a little more towards a straight side wind, the multiplier would be less. So, say for instance, this is a seven iron. It's The multiplier is 1.13. If it's more towards a straight side wind, it's probably going to run around more 0 0.6, 0 0.5 around that area. Now, on the other hand, if it's a little more down towards a, head, a straight headwind, you would need to add some to that number. So it'd be more closer to a headwind, maybe 1.8, somewhere around there. Now, let's take the 7 iron supposed to carry 151 so we need to find our multiplier we already know it's 1.13 1.13 multiplied by 18 gives us 20.34 we need to subtract it since it's a headwind variety it's a cross headwind so we need to take 151 minus 20.3 gives us around 130. Now, from my experience, so this is just an average. I know that the multiplier in very high wind speeds for iron is actually a little higher than 1.13. So I know that this there's going to be about a 3 to 4 yard percent error here. The actual multiplier for irons in very high winds is 1.3. Remember, this is an average across all the wind speed categories to make it easier 
to remember the number. So if I take 1.3 multiplied by 18, that gives me 23.4. So that's three yards more it's going to take off. So really, this ball should land between 126 and 130. So let's take a look. So 126, 127. So that's the that's what the in higher wind speed, very high wind speeds, you will have to change the numbers around. You may have to add a little bit more percent to it, or just at the end of your calculation, just know that you need to add a few more yards. You need to take a few more yards off the shot. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is part one of my wind tutorial series. The next tutorial is going to focus on aiming in regards to the wind and then the next the tutorial after that is going to put everything together the elevation the wind the lie percentages and we're going to put all that together use our multipliers and see how it affects distance and learn how to play on an actual course i hope you found this video helpful i'm so happy to get this data out to the virtual golf community Stay tuned, much more videos to come. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and keep coming back for more content like this and to improve your gamer abilities.